Hello, we are back once again with another session of Hayward. This is session three. We've got all of our lovelies back, and we are ready for another epic, epic adventure. Previously, the party made its way to the forest country of Alderaan. The sea of trees soon engulfed them as they began to run into some eerie encounters. First, they found a house in the woods that seemed to have been recently abandoned, as there were no signs of any people around. However, through investigating inside, they learned of a boy and his mother, who seemed to live here previously, through a journal that was left behind and written by the boy. It described the boy and his life living with his mother, while also explaining the relationship with his father and some strange dreams he had been having about him. After searching through the house, the party continued to investigate further behind the property, only to find what seemed to be the remains of the boy and his mother. While putting their bodies to rest, they encountered what seemed to be the boy once again, this time alive. However, this is not the boy that they thought they knew from the journal, but instead a strange monster that had seemed to copy the boy in his appearance. After a tough battle with the monster, they were able to come out on top and rest up for the night. The next leg of their journey took them all the way to the Fields of Vigor. A large group known as the Wood Watchers... Sorry. A large open area of farmland and a small village at the center. Here, they in part, the party encountered a group known as the Wood Watchers, a special operatives group of the Forest Rangers Guild. After some suspicion from this group, the two parties reconciled and went back to the village after the cries of more monsters started to arise. Here, they are more formally introduced themselves and uh, explained the situation not only in the fields, but also around Alderaan as a whole. Now that the party is well into Alderaan, they await their next details from Seven regarding the mission. It is morning time, you guys. Actually, before that, uh, before we get into morning, can I speak with Karazi and kind of the rest of you guys pop into Insight for a quick sec? Uh, okay. Ooh, you're in trouble. Uh oh. All right. Karazi. Yes. Hold the on. night. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. The night is restless and stirring. As you can hear the distant sounds of monsters calling out. However, at a point, things seem to settle down and uh, your journey up to this point kind of wills you into a deep sleep for the rest of the night. Karazi, as you fall into your dream state, what sort of things are on your mind? What have you made of your journey so far? Hmm. Well, I can say, of course, it's been uh, very eventful as compared to the downtime I've had after the tower. Lots of fun journeys, but there's still something looming over my head, and that is the glorious storm I that I will forever be searching for. Always just lingering in the background. And it's kind of like pushing me forward through these adventures, so that's really the only thought he's having at the current moment. His first his next goal. Alright. So, as you dream of the storm, I, your dream kind of coalesces and shifts as you find your ba yourself back in the thieves' den. Everything seems to be normal. The sounds of the city put you at ease as you are back in familiar territory. As you stroll through the city, instead of the normal beggars and random children approaching you for money, 
everyone seems to be invo- avoiding you instead and running away as you approach. After a while, someone finally touches you or approaches you from behind. Excuse me, sir. Can you please spare some change? Turning around, you see a decrepit woman reaching out a cupped hand. However, her face is obscured by a strange mask. This mask covers the woman's left eye and has sort of a wing protruding out, sticking out of the front of the mask. And uh, sort of right on the nose, you see like a long beak shape also protruding out. The mask is lined with like gold and made out of sort of a deep blue felt cloth. Interesting. I'm a little little sussed out by this woman to begin with, but I'm not going to show that. But I'll give her one of my many fake coins I have in my pocket just to see where it goes. Oh, thank you, sir. You are so kind. You continue on. Still strolling through the city. Next, you are approached by a young boy. And he has this same winged mask on his face. Excuse me, sir. Do you have any money? Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach in once again the fake coin passed along. I'm a little more suspicious this time. <laughs> He accepts, uh, thanks you, and uh, runs off again. Can I trail this boy? Sure. Trailing the boy, um, he doesn't seem to be going any particular way. He just sort of seems to be running without any really sense of direction. He's taking the most random of turns random of alleyways it seems like but as he slows down he comes to a place where there seems to be many more people kind of crowded in an area and you stop every single one of these people have the mask as they all turn to look at you Oh god. <laughs> okay. D- like, am I in an obvious spot for them to turn around, or am I still kind of hiding for them to turn around? No, I mean, you're out in the open. Okay. In the middle of the street. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna keep walking towards them. As you walk towards the crowd, they seem to kind of engulf you a little bit and close upon you. You stop again, and you are now surrounded by these mask-wearing people. Every time you turn around, there's just more and more masks in front of you. Until eventually you reach up and feel the left side of your own face and the mask is there on you as well oh god soon after you are willed back awake in sort of a weird shock what the okay well, first things first, I'm going to, like, reach around my face and make sure that the mask isn't there. <laughs> you are not covered by anything. Okay. Um, I'm 
then going to proceed to check every other person's face. <laughs> if they have a mask on. Uh, the party? Uh, no. No masks. Um, the, the wood watchers, no masks. I mean, they just have their hoods kind of over their heads, but no masks. So... Everything in the in the house seems to be of normalcy. Strange. All right, get the boys back in. I don't like this. peaceful first stressful moment um oh my god i have been picked up and carried to somewhere else that was great because you were the only one talking and then it was just like <laughs> bloom and it's like well there he goes <laughs> ah! i didn't realize i could do that that's cool great now that you know you can back. you have all the power <laughs> i don't know if you can send people <sighs> as well. oh oh Find that out in All right. Time. So, uh, sunrise is a welcome sight after spending the night listening to some screaming, some weird blood curdling screaming. And honestly, some downright frightening sounds that echoed throughout the valley. It now seems that everyone has calmed and, uh, from outside, you can hear the sounds of passing horse hooves, clip-clopping along, chirping birds singing once again, and you can hear conversations from outside of the village. Please take note, Karazi is currently sitting in a corner, rocking back and forth. Mmm... Uh, no, no. <laughs> What's is... the problem with you? Did, did, did you see the masks? They're everywhere. You're wearing a mask. They're wearing a mask. Ilma's wearing a mask. The mask. Ilma's yeah. gonna nod. Calm down and eat a stool or a book with me for breakfast, man. I don't see any masks. Do I? No. I mean, no, no, is a mask. But, but the kid. The kid wasn't there? Where'd the kid go? Didn't we beat the kid? Where'd the mom go? In the ground? They were just right there. Do you know what he's talking about, Sateros? Do you need some water or something, Karazi? I'm gonna get you some water. You can just chug the water. You all More. notice that the, uh, the wood watchers are not inside uh, the house anymore. But they seem to have left behind their sleeping uh, arrangements, uh, kind of tidied up and whatnot. Sateros, uh, you step outside. There are numerous amounts of uh, villagers kind of just uh, darting all over the place across the village. Um, and you see uh, Klein, who is the leader of the wood watchers uh and he's talking with a, a couple of older uh gentlemen and uh they're kind of right next to um the well at the center i will head up to glenn I'm gonna like wait a second. I guess wait until he's done talking. As you approach, he uh, finishes up and spots you. Ah, I see you guys are awake. Wonderful. Yeah, we're uh, we're awake. I, uh, you know, as as someone who is more versed in. The wilds here, more so than I. Do you have any idea 
if there would be any kind of correlation between uh, a shape-shifting monster in here and some kind of, you know, mental... Um, brain, I'll say. Hmm. Well, um, I suppose it's not unheard of. I guess I would say what kind of mental strain are we thinking here? Because it can come in some different forms. You want to see for yourself? I don't quite have a... Uh, grasp on it, I suppose. Sure. Plus, we could probably take a chance to get into more of the, the interesting things about the forest. Certainly. And what we can do to help. I'll head back to, uh, back to the, the house with him. I'll... Like... Oh, go ahead. I'll go round up the rest of the Wood Watchers, and we will meet you back inside in a moment. Okay. When he goes back inside, um, Cornus is going to be like patting Karazi on the back while he's on the floor and eating a book for breakfast. For breakfast. Nutritious. Yeah, you got to have a good, healthy breakfast for every day. No more going better? to be staring outside. Razi will be visibly calm to see you guys booping around without masks on, by the way. We're not wearing them anymore. That's good. Well, you weren't wearing them at all. But everyone was. We all are. What does okay. that mean? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wears a mask. No one's wearing a mask. Mask on, mask off. <laughs> so we're just we're still waiting to hear from Seven about who we're looking for, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm just gonna give okay. you a nod. She needs to call us on her cell phone. <laughs> well, I guess we can just hang out. I guess we can just hang out here and uh, see what we can do. And Nilno is going to start off by walking up to Karazi, and then Nilno is going to hold their hand out while staring. I agree, Nilno. I just shake my head up and down. Nil no, Nil no, will unmovingly frozen staring and extended out at you. Nil no, Nil no, stare. I'll give him a fake coin. Or <gasps> no, sorry, a fake coin. What's going on? Well can Nil Nil check? to see if it's fake, because it's a one singular coin and not a bunch of coins that randomly spawn out of midair every day. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Nil Nil knows! Nil Nil knows! Nil Nil knows! I Nil can't do it today, to though. It I'm distraught. Oh, that's why Nil You that's think Nil Nil cares? Cute. I was gonna say! Nil Nil is yet. checking the money. <laughs> Nil Nil find out if your coin is fake or not if you are cheating no no apologies i missed that my wi-fi cut out yeah i was oh, gonna say it looked like you kind of like, kinda like froze at a second and it was yeah. uh so karazi gave nil no a fake coin nil no is checking because it's a single coin and nil no knows that this guy spawns money every so yeah. often so, Nil Nil's checking to see if the coin's fake, and, um... Uh, prepare for vengeance. Will Nil Nil find out? Can I guess roll insight? Alright, Nil Nil. 
That is a 17. Oh, shit. Oh, wait. Hold on. Math's wrong. 18. 5 Ooh. plus 3 is, is an 8. Um. <laughs> no, no. You uh, are pretty knowledgeable about your money, so you can tell it is fake. All right, using Corniff's voice. I know what you do. You get the money. Where is the money? <laughs> and then no no's gonna just like gently give you the coin back. I'll give you some coins. You can have six. <laughs> I'm then gonna hug Nil Nil and be fully calmed down because I realize that you're real. And then Nil Nil's gonna make a little bell sounds as you hug them. Aww. Actually, you know what? We're gonna change it up. Kind of like wind chimes, you know? Nice breeze of wind chimes. Whoa. It's calming. Do... It's relaxing. <laughs> Do nil nil sound unlocked? It's wow. been three months. I've got time to think of nil nil things. <laughs> the sounds. Who knows what other nil nil sounds we're gonna get? I'm excited. Maybe we're gonna have to drum nil nil. <laughs> <laughs> so after a couple minutes um the door of the the house opens and in walks the uh, the wood watchers they all say hello to you and uh klein asks everyone to uh gather around Well, glad to see you all uh, had some good sleep. Satoro said something might have been wrong with one of you, so I hope it's nothing too serious. I think about it. I don't know if Nil Nil specifically was in their usual Nil Nil stare form. But just in case I did forget, Nilno is going to be in their disguised, uh, what was her name? Diana kind of form to make them look more, you know, human and approachable. And then Nilno is going to nod and then point over at Karazi. Fine, we'll look over to Karazi. Well, I don't know if you know anything about this, but last night... I was, my, my brain was infested. I was surrounded by people. They were all wearing this mysterious mask over their left eyes. Had a feather out the side. Of, was, was it a feather? I believe it was a feather. Almost like a feathery wing design coming out of it in gold accents. And they were just everywhere, watching me everywhere. And I had a mask, and, I, and you had a mask, and they had a mask, even though you guys weren't there really scary. Do you know anything about that? He looks a little shocked and confused. Um, I don't. But Sateros, you did say something about fighting a faceless monster now? Yeah. Right. Um, pull a face. It was real creepy. Hmm. Well, um, I suppose it's not unheard of that encounters with faceless can end up being traumatic for some people, but usually the trauma stems from the loss of a loved one and seeing the loved one's face once again, but masks? Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure how the two correlate, but um, he really thinks I suppose they could have some relation to each other. You said the mask had a wing design on it? That doesn't sound yeah. like anything I've on the left eye. ever seen. Um. 
So it's possible your trauma could be stemming from the faceless, or it could be a mix of some things. Uh, uh, Raina, what do you think? Hmm. I'm not too certain. But it, it sounds like it could be, like you said, Klein, a, a form of trauma from the faceless, but it somehow merged itself with maybe something you're after? Uh. Crossy's gonna have an epiphany and try to keep it to himself. <laughs> he doesn't want this info getting out. If possible. I don't know if anyone will notice that I have a reaction, though. Are you trying to hide it? Yes. Um, I mean, like, if anyone wants to, like, insight check him or anything, feel free, but... You know what? I'm gonna I'll say that have... you can hide it. I have no... Yeah, that's like a... That's just a 16... So, um, well, Karazi, um, if your dream ever comes up again, I guess let us know and we can try and do all we can for you, but uh, I'm just not quite sure how to handle this at the, this moment. Okay. I'll let you guys know. And I'm gonna... Cover cover the left eye real quick, and just think. No, no's gonna do the same. <laughs> no, no's gonna put put a hand over their left eye too. Anyway, now that we're all well rested, um, I suppose maybe we should give a little info on, uh, I guess, who we are and maybe the situation at hand here. So, first and foremost, uh, as we told you, we are the Wood Watchers. We are a special operatives group, uh, a part of the Forest Rangers, and um, some of the top in our class. Um, we recently had been assigned to uh, the village of Cornucopia here. Uh, the village here, they're responsible for harvesting and shipping crops out uh, from the Fields of Vigor to uh, Ohara via the river connecting the two. At the edge of the river lies a dam as well as a small little canal to help channel boats to and from the different elevation of the river. The dam is also what helps control the flow of water from the lake into the river. Now you might be thinking, why don't people just uh, walk the riverbanks? Well, you can. It's just that they're very rough and rocky terrain, so venturing down them is a is a little bit treacherous. And uh, your other option is just going straight through the forest, which up to your opinion on whether that's more or less dangerous but anyway um lately across the country um malevolent i'm sure as you have all encountered so far have seemed to have grown in numbers especially around the fields here and it's made it quite difficult to ship out crops at night as uh that's usually when they're most active uh, usually crops are harvested during the day and shipped out at night and uh, this routine is pretty consistent but uh, yeah because of the interruptions uh, we were called upon to kind of observe the situation in and around the village and defend it should there need be a need to But um, that's that's really our objective here, 
um, I know we talked briefly last night, but why don't we understand what it is that you are all after? Maybe we can help each other. Uh, no, Mill's gotta like slowly turn to everyone and then like move their hand <laughs> off to their left eye. And then kind of do like the the like phone kind of like uh, call. Well, All right, Janet, no one knows what a phone is. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, easily. <laughs> How much did we save last night? Yeah. I don't, How much I don't, do we want to keep? Yeah, I don't know what we've said to these people last time. Because we're just waiting for seven to get us info, right? Mm-hmm. So we don't really need to say anything to them. We're just waiting for a call, you know. We're just waiting for a call. Yeah, because, yeah, like, I mean, I don't even know what I would tell them right now, because, like, we don't know. I mean, I guess we're looking for, like, the... Um, oh, what was the name? I, I guess we don't even know too much yet. I think you guys we... at least told him that you were um, sent by Seven. He knows of Seven. Yeah. No, oh, we're okay. waiting for Seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're waiting for more information, but. For now, we're staying in the village, and we'd like to get to know and understand more about what's happening in the forest to, like, cause all this increased, like, um, monster and spirit activity that you're talking about. Or at least I would. Hmm. Well, if you have no direct destination at this point, uh, I guess we could use some help. Um, how does uh, the next three nights or so sound? And then maybe we can regroup. See what the next uh, stage for you guys might be. Yeah. I guess yeah. that's fine for now. Until we get our information, we have nothing going on. So that sounds sounds well enough for me. We're certainly able and down to help. Just let us know what you need. Certainly. Well, on that note, um, last night ended up being one of the worst in terms of number of malevolent that were approaching the village. However, what's very weird is that these particular malevolent don't seem to be too different. Or they do seem to be different, rather. As they don't really leave a corpse behind or any physical form when they die. Instead, they, they just dissipate out of existence. Usually when we kill a malevolent, they'll have some, some sort of physical thing that is discarded. But these ones just sort of almost vanished into the smoke. What, what, um... <clears throat> are these, like, your classic styles of malevolent? Or are they, like, more specific looking, similar looking? Sorry, I cut out again. What was your question? 
So, are these, like, your standard malevolent, you know, ones that you've seen before, just, you know, different uh, in that, or are they, you know, different styles, like, more of a similar-looking thing, you know? Maybe something with, like, a skull for a head? No, um... They seem to be resembling malevolent that we've encountered before. It's just when we've killed them, they don't seem to leave a corpse behind. Rather, they dissipate into sort of like smoke, I want to say. Ash? Huh. It was strange. Okay, just checking. Do the foulings do that too? I'm trying to remember. When they die. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do? Okay. <clears throat> Maybe they're not, like, natural somehow, and they're, like, created by, like, artificially or, like, magically, maybe? Hmm. It is a possibility. But I'm afraid, at least at this point, we don't know enough to really say. And it's not like we can really uh, observe them after they're dead, especially if they're dissipating. It's not like we can study them. Hmm. And do they just, like, wander out of the forest like normal ones would, I guess? Yes and no. It was strange. In the past, we've only been here for about a month at this point, but before last night, it would seem that they would tend to just wander. But last night, there was a weird coordination about them. Almost as if they came in waves of some sort. Huh. Well, I feel like that kind of feels like it could be someone like controlling them or summoning them and stuff. Like, who do you suppose not... could be doing such a thing? Well, I guess that's a big question, isn't it? And Nilno's gonna like count their fingers and be like, uh, they kind of like shake their head. I mean, we don't really know anyone from here to, I guess make any assumptions well we can keep an eye out tonight see if we can probe a little bit more into the forest if there's a specific area that they're coming from more generally we can head over there you guys can focus more on defense after a little bit see if we can find more information I feel like that's a good course of action alright well, uh, we've got three spots that we usually uh, patrol around uh, every night, or every couple of nights. Um, and those would be, one, the, the storehouse, uh, which is kind of right outside of the village here. Um, two, there's this abandoned guard tower kind of at the south side of the field. Uh, we've kind of made a temporary base of operations there for this mission, uh, and we've left a couple of uh, items out there as well. And uh, finally, the other spot that we like to go to is the dam to the east, as uh, they seem to like to crowd around there as well. Hmm. So, they tend to 
attack your base of operations too, or appear there a lot? In appear the there, town? yes. I'm not. Sh I don't know if they necessarily have attacked us there. Hmm. Okay. But uh, we figure we can, if you guys are here for three nights, we can take one night each for each of these locations. I'm just going to like give him a nod and do like a little bit of like sneaky around and then kind of like go around Karazi and just like go back to What was at the him. first one again? The storehouse. Oh, the storehouse. Okay. I don't know. The dam seems kind of cool too. Yeah, the tower and the dam seem like the most in interesting. How far apart from each other are they? Well, the storehouse is only about literally like a couple minutes outside of the center of the village here. The dam is probably about a 20 minute walk to the east. The storehouse is probably about the same to the south. Um, the storehouse to the dam probably would take a little bit longer. But or excuse me, the, the tower from the dam and the uh, tower from the storehouse is probably 10 minutes or so. And then the storehouse to the dam is probably 15 minutes. Hmm. So we wouldn't be able to like monitor all three at once unless we split up no probably not but figure if we can tackle one each night then uh i think that will probably be the best they don't s seem to spawn aside from last night in the past they don't seem to spawn very regularly in one spot at a time That's why we tend to go back and forth between these three spots is uh, after a few days, one spot will have uh, spawned more than another. Okay. Hmm. Um, well, we can go to the dam first. That's my vote. No one's gonna nod yeah. a lot with that. And then kind of like point at their head and like nod too and give a thumbs up. Yeah, Snowmill really wants to go to the dam. Damn right. All right, well, the dam it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. And are these usually just a nighttime occurrence or do they ever appear during the day? Um, it's not to say they don't ever appear during the day. It's just that they're definitely much more active during the night. Well, is there anything that we can do to help the village during the day? Um, I mean, it's it's still the morning, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, if you want, you can always ask around. I'm sure the villagers have uh, chores that they could uh, love some extra hands with. Nil Nil is going to go over to a totally real treasure chest that they've been carrying around and pull out a hammer from it. Like, da na 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 <laughs> And like holding up the hammer. And then walks back over to the group. I like your hammer. 
Nilnil is going to give it to you. <gasps> and then, uh, using Indira's voice, Nilnil is going to say, All right, you're doing all the manual labor. Rosie doesn't care. It'll get his mind off the masks. See? Nilnil's just looking out for you. See? There you go. And Nilnil's going to, like, look at the group and they give the thumbs up. <laughs> Yes, no manual labor for me. <laughs> no, that means you get to do the mental labor. You get to do like the puzzles <laughs> where you have to like sort things into different <laughs> spots. And uh, I'll I just, just have the easy way out. I'll do the puzzle where I gotta like put the like the squares into the square hole and the circle into mm -hmm, the circle. One. Mm -hmm. The circle goes in the square hole, though. <laughs> Hmm, where does the rectangle go? Oh, the square hole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Also, oh, you gave the hammer to someone with minus one strength. Minus oh, absolutely. One. That's the come on. That's a usual <laughs> for all of our you know campaigns. Uh, do we have someone with the positive strength? I think it's Dira. <laughs> I, yeah. I have... Oh. Oh. Yeah. Corneth oh, got arms. I mean and legs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's more in the legs. I, <laughs> I never skip leg day. <laughs> well, uh, that no no is gonna. We love helping others. Smile. Great. Oh, human smile. <gasps> or what was Diane? Was she like a? I have a picture she of was her. An elf. She was. Yeah, I was gonna say like I think she was still an elf. Wasn't human, but. <laughs> God, Nil Nil's kind of wearing a mask right now. I'm not gonna say that. Oh, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's not only on the left eye. That's all that I care about. Oh, man. Well, um, as thanks for not only helping us but electing to help the villagers as well, we can put in a, a good word with you at HQ if you guys ever feel like joining. Nil Nil's gonna point at Cornus. It's really nice of you, thanks. Alright. The Wood Watchers will uh, head on it's out. Not, it's not money, but... We'll get money <laughs> later. <laughs> that's, that's not that's what I'm Why are we complaining about money when we have someone that spawns money? <laughs> yeah, hey, that's my money. <laughs> I mean, our money, huh? <laughs> I have so much gold, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could melt it down and make armor out of it. Be pretty oh, cool. That nil nil is going to go back to their treasure chests, and I like to think it's like a really small, almost like switch-sized treasure chest. And nil nil is gonna like reach into it and just pull out a crowbar, <laughs> and then <laughs> and just to like walk over to Karazi, just like smiling. Kind of like tapping it in their hand a little bit. Rossi's gonna grab it with extreme difficulty. Oh, oh, you, yeah. You, I, I, could you even gra like grab it away from Nil Nil if you tried? Oh, absolutely. Nil Nil would just Nil let him take it. Are you kidding me? Or is Nil Nil no, still Nil Nil still a uh, minus one in strength. Oh, okay. I know I, they well, carried a whole potted plant evil. in the snow, but like that's true. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but uh, w after you take the crowbar, Nil Nil's gonna start heading outside. It's kind of funny envisioning Diana like with like the crowbar and like doing that. Mm -hmm. Like she would, like that. That's not something you think she would do before. <laughs> oh. oh man! All right. Uh, well, Nil no, Nil, no, you uh, head on outside, and I assume the rest mm -hmm. of you follow. Um, yeah. I actually do have a small map of the village in Owlbear, Ooh. if you guys would like to use that. Absolutely. Oh. You put in the time to make a map, what, are we gonna not use it? Sounds like a great idea. Oh, wow. I don't use maps, I was walking the wrong direction. Just like a certain yeah. moss head. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wash, wash. Get this map. Walk, walk, fashion baby. Oh my god, I forgot that we scaled ourselves appropriately. Yeah, no, no is canonically taller than Karazi. <laughs> yes. yes. 
I've never actually like pictured that at all ever. <laughs> and uh, I was like, Isn't oh, it creepy. It is. Nil Nil is just like <laughs> this giant doll now. Yeah. Like, when did this happen? Well, oh, does Nil Nil's height change when they like transform <sighs> into someone? Hmm. I think that I can appear one foot shorter or taller. So, could you like? How tall are you? Nil Nil is four foot three. So Nil Nil could go to three feet three. Good because Krazi is three six. <laughs> oh, there we go. We fixed Wait. it. All right, there so, we go. If you transformed into Satteros, would you just be a smaller Satteros? I would be a yeah. smaller Satteros <laughs> without wings. <laughs> That'd be so I weird. Do it, no, no, do it. I need to see that. And I think even with like. Karazi, like, maybe Nil Nil could get away with, like, the horns being, like, Nil Nil's little, like, hat with bells. <laughs> but, like, um, I could also appear thin or fat or in between. Can't change your body type. Adapt to the form that is the same basic arrangement of limbs. Hey, yo, thick Nil Nil. You can't be, like, a <laughs> tiny centaur. No, I cannot be. A, I cannot be a tiny horse. <laughs> oh my god! If you could, you could be a pony, and we could ride you with the battle. I think those are called uh, druids, but <laughs> uh, never heard of one. <laughs> oh yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, the, the one that I can think of from distant memory d didn't really transform, so. <laughs> shake my head but actually uh nil nil after seeing that they are in fact taller than karazi will just like mario like bow, 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 like shrink <laughs> down a foot and now nil nil wait i think nil nil just went through a wall the door is right there there we go Classic. it's actually over here Oh, that's oh. a window! Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, fair. <laughs> Wait, I should have an actual uh, Diane uh, one, but yeah, Nil Nil will be outside to kind of keep things uh, going. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can, we can oh, walk man. out. Uh, I'll not use the window because I'd probably get stuck. <laughs> I'm like Nil Nil, who's, who's short enough to just like crawl out <laughs> <laughs> nice so stepping out into the village center uh you see uh kind of the village more clearly now in the daylight um <laughs> <laughs> nice um straight across you guys see a small tavern. Um, these are all other residences. Up here is a barn of sorts. It's just as well as like another uh, storehouse. Um, and yeah, we got some very small docks overlooking the lake here as well. So, where would you guys like to go? Um, well, I guess while like walk, I want to like walk around and just like get a feel for the area first, see all the stuff, and then I'm gonna, when I like see the docks, I'm I'm just gonna like be like, oh, I really miss my ship. <laughs> the mob man. <laughs> One day I'll have my own boat again. Maybe that's what I'll do in retirement. <laughs> I missed that okay. boat. Anybody else? Can I go check out the horses? Oh, sure. Th when you start moving over to the barn, Nilno is going to smile brightly as if they were thinking the same thing. Wow. Yes, you two make your way over to the barn. Ah, 
anything cool. I don't know, it's gonna take the crowbar from you and just like stare at the horses, smiling <laughs> elf form. Jesus. <laughs> that was so funny. And it, it looks like everything is kind of like still well put together here. <laughs> like, uh, nothing's been, there's not a hole blown in a wall somewhere. No, the village and all its buildings seem pretty intact. Um, the, the wood on many of the buildings does seem to be quite old, but, um, it's still pretty strong, still is holding strong for the most part. Um, you guys walk over to the barn entrance and uh, off to the side you see a small little stable with a few horses off to in the back here. Is there anyone back here? Um... There's like one um, guy back here attending to the horses, kind of brushing one of them. It's like, oh, hello. Are you the new folks in town? Yes, hi. Hello. I'm just going to wave. They're a little shy. Don't mind them. Oh, that's Smiling. quite all right. The horses love anyone. And Crossy try to put Nil Nil on a horse. <laughs> so what uh brings you all through here? Yeah. Uh we don't really know. We're just exploring a little monsters. Bit. Problem. Yeah, yeah, your your monsters. Gonna see if we can help with them. What's been going on. Oh, you're gonna help with the monsters? Oh, bless you. Uh, it's been quite stressful around here having to think about uh, all the malevolent outside. But I'm glad someone's finally addressing it. You have my thanks. <laughs> using Cornus' <laughs> voice. Yes, using Cornus' voice. We're going to address it like a salad. What they said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Well, once again, I thank you. And then Nilmo's going to look at Karazi and then point at the horses. Karazi's and then point at Karazi. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just like, whoop, 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 whoop. I'm going to put you on a horse. No, I was gonna shake their head. No. Oh. Okay. No, I was gonna get behind you. Crowbar still in hand, and just gonna kind of like push you with both hands and the crowbar closer to the horses. D d nil, nil. <laughs> kind of like bump, bump, bump. N nil, nil, nil. Bad nil, nil. <laughs> <laughs> nil, nil will stop. I'm gonna drag you back to Cornith real quick. Be like, all right, my two hours up. Your turn. Take them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, the... Wild well, no, this no, is no, like bringing, it, bringing the kid to like the other parent. <laughs> like, uh, uh, like, all right, it's your day today. <laughs> While no, no, it's being like dragged away with crowbar in the hand. Is no, no, gonna like wave at the uh the person that was in there as they like go out. Oh man. I just imagine uh from like Guardians 3, <laughs> the dog. It's like <laughs> you do not call me that. You are a bad nil nil. <gasps> Take it back. <laughs> That's about how that went. Oh man. Alright, well nil nil too has been passed off to dad number two. <laughs> um dad number two or dad number three. What are you guys wanting to do? Um, well, I guess seeing the boats, maybe I'll go and, like, talk to, like, some of the, like, 
the fishermen or like the people who work on the boats and like offer to help with like repairs or something. Sure. You, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. And I'll, as we're walking over there, I'm going to say to Nil Nil, as Nil Nil's not with me, I'll say, um, come on, we can put that crowbar to good use. And we'll go over there. (laughs) All right. Uh, yeah, you guys head over to the docks. Um, there's a number of different fishermen kind of uh, loading some uh, stuff onto the boats here. Um, some of them are uh, repairing some of the boats. Um, some of them are kind of uh, taking away like fish that they caught back into the village. Okay, um, I, I'm gonna go over to the people who are, um, I find that someone who's like, you know, seems like they're doing, uh, like some sort of boat related task specifically. Um, who do I see working like that? Like, what kinds of people? Um, there's what an older doing? human gentleman, there is a couple of, uh, middle-aged, like, uh, elves, and, um, some, like, younger, like, early 20s teenage, uh, um, like, halflings also working along with them. Hmm. Okay, I, th- I think... Let's go to the old guy. Maybe maybe he's wise and has some insight. Be like, um, I'll be like, hey, excuse me. Um, we are stopping the village and we are wondering if there's anything we can help you with today. He looks up. Ah, you must be those new folks that uh, Klein was talking about. Well, um, I'd say we're pretty well staffed here. (laughs) Um, let me think. Perhaps you could, uh, help repair some of the wood planks on, uh, that boat over there. He points to, uh, this boat. Gladly. Boat has uh, seen better days and could use a fix. But uh, I don't know how well you are with the uh, tools and such. But um, if you like, I can lend you some. Perfect. And then um, a little later after working, I want to ask him um hey have you has anything like what's been happening now with these with the monsters attacking like this like happened before Hmm. not since i've been here typically the monsters would only venture close to the village by chance and even so the chances of them wandering all the way out here were very rare so it's this is definitely new for all of us i think and it's got everyone on a little bit of an edge right now hmm yeah we're we're a little bit on edge too but it's gonna we're, we're gonna figure this out and yeah, just looking for any extra help or info we can get about this yeah, well my work isn't to fight the monsters so uh, 
Not sure how much more information I can get you, but uh, I guess I can say the malevolence that we have encountered in the past, um, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, so you can never be too careful. So I would just say make sure you watch your backs. All right. Well, thank you. And, of course, uh, anytime, and thank you for the help. Yeah, no problem. All right. Set. I'm going to go to the... <laughs> I'm going to go... To the doctor? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. That's where I need to go. I will not. Feel different. Plus, I got something better. Oh. All right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have and see if they got anything in the old room or mill. Or if they just need help, like, moving things or something. Um, yeah, there's a couple of people uh, in the tavern. Um, just kind of playing cards or uh, having a couple of drinks or uh, some stuff to eat. Um, the bartender seems to be uh, polishing polishing some glasses. Uh, yeah. All right. I will go up to the bartender first. Myself a brewski. Ah, just like an antler. Oh. You seem like a new face. What will it be? Yeah, imagine you don't get a ton of dragonborn around here. But uh, yeah, me and my uh, my buddies are in town for a little bit, seeing what we can do to help out, help around. So. Oh, well, that's I'll quite take, nice of you. I'll take an ale, and also, uh, if you need help with anything, I'll take some of that, too. Well, here's your ale. Um, I don't know if I have any immediate work, but uh, I guess if you, if you like sweeping the floor for me, I guess that would be appreciated. Sweep the floor. All right. I'll, I'll sweep the floor, and as I uh, sweep the closer to, uh, you know, just one hand. Hmm, let's see, how, do I have a tail? Yes. Yeah. Your model's correct. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I'll oh. just drink with one hand and sweep with my other. I don't, I don't trust my tail to do that. <laughs> to sweep or drink. A sweet uh, or a dream. <laughs> um but as I as I sweep a little bit closer to the, the folks that are just kinda of sitting around playing cards, I'm just kinda of listening to the conversation and just like uh just like a howdy. Ah, how's it going, sir? Care for Good. a game? Oh Well oh. Let me, uh... Yeah, okay. I can set this this down. Alright. What you playing? Oh, just some blackjack. Alrighty. So, where, I'll, uh, where I'll are you from? I'll set the room and sit down. <laughs> well, I'm from all the way in Invel. But, you know, doing, uh, doing a bit of traveling, you could say. Wow, Inville. I hear it's quite cold up there. It is. I'm, uh, I'm fairly used to it, luckily enough. But, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to sustain a lot of people up there. 
That's a big problem in the city where I live. I can imagine. Cold probably doesn't make it so great for uh, crops. Yeah. But then again, and neither do the monsters around here, huh? Oh. Maybe that. Yeah, well, that's kind of a sour topic at the moment around the village, but, uh... I get that. That's, uh... That's something where I think friends and I can help out. You know, we're... You know, I'm just gonna kind of gesture to the rapier hanging at my side. We're adventurers. Oh, I thought he and... meant us. He's talking about his rape here, not even us. Oh. Oh, battle train. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you all left me, okay? <laughs> the rape here never leaves. Yeah, that's right. Even though I don't actually use it in combat, you know, it's still there. It's it's there for me, even if I neglect it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we think uh, we can help out with uh, finding the village a little bit and maybe see if we can find some more information that we can protect you more in the future. Well, Do you know if there are any any kind of rumors about like directions that the monsters are generally coming from or anything like that? Oh. Talk to a few folks who work out in the fields, and uh, while they haven't seen anything directly, during the evening before the curfew kicks in, we they say they have heard um, sounds of monsters coming from the south but it's all oh, it's very hard to really discern exactly where they're coming from in the forest they could they could really be anywhere for all we know understandable is there any like nearby you know abandoned or something besides the guard tower <laughs> where you know like some something could hide any kind of interesting locations like that around here uh, he thinks for a moment well not too not really in the immediate fields area itself, but uh, I know northwest of here, there used to be an old uh, ruin of some sort. I'm not really sure exactly what it used to be, but I know I've heard many stories about monsters roaming around there as well. Good to know. I don't know if you guys are looking at the world map, but Northwest. Hmm. Northwest. Well, the world map's just right over there. Good to know. Yeah, but thanks. Thanks for letting us know. We can check that out. Trying to find a, a source, you know, might help in the long run. So, if you figure anything else out or 
hear more from someone else, let us know. Certainly. And, uh, thanks for, uh, all that you're doing for us. We really appreciate it. Happy to help. How old that I do in Blackjack? Over to roll. Sure. Man. <laughs> I miss the gambling. Damn it. Oh, for what? I have proficiency in cards. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I can just roll whatever that is. I don't know what, what that is normally, though. Oh. Uh, um, Slight of hand. Just to say that, yeah, or maybe. That probably would make sense. Sure. Oh, speaking of proficiency of with cards, I had just learned that Nil Nil has proficiency in no tools. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Nil Nil has never used uh, anything in their life, apparently. <laughs> You're not even proficient in the crowbar? Not even the crowbar. Oh, Fake no. fan. Nil Nil just carries them practice. around. Lola just has a crowbar just to have one, just to say. <laughs> it got the intimidation factor. It's like, that's, that's 24. very... Okay. Uh, yeah, you win um, five gold off of the, the gents playing cards. And uh, Drew and Ethan, you but, oh, each can get um, another five gold for your chores. Okay. You're helping. Yeah. Well, since Nilno was there, I'm going to split it with Nilno. Yeah, I go. Nilno terrorized wait, the horse. Wait, how are you going to split your five gold, though? Uh, I'm just going to break one of the pieces in half. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> a good. Yeah, that's a pretty corner move. Nilno will make sure to take only the two and you get the three. <laughs> now I just have one broken and have a gold piece. Exactly. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Hopefully, someplace will still take this. All right. Um. With that, the day moves on, and uh, as the night approaches, y'all uh, meet up with the Wood Watchers at the village center. And uh, you can see the village residents slowly kind of making their way back uh, within the uh, premises with all kinds of bundles of wheat, corn, soy, and many more crops. Um, you see Rain and Klein talking to one of them, uh, who seems particularly worried about something. Uh, let's just go on over. All right, you guys approach them. Kind of listen in for a sec. Kind of get like, all right, like let's listen. Maybe, maybe he's saying something that is his worries right now. Give him a second. Let him cook. Uh, please. Ah, <laughs> uh, my my child. Uh, they were. Supposed to go retrieve some stuff from the storehouse, but they haven't returned yet. It's all right, ma'am. We can go and take a look. Client says. And uh, they'll both turn back to you. Well, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to fit both the dam and the storehouse in tonight. So maybe we'll have to postpone the dam to tomorrow so if you guys are all right we can go to the storehouse and see if this child need, is found no no nods yeah that seems a bit more pressing mm -hmm. very well and uh yeah you guys after all the villagers are back in, back inside the walls, um, you guys do a little bit of last uh, planning and uh, prep work before uh, you make your way over. And uh, it's just as 
Klein said before, um, it's only about five minute walk, uh, just kind of southeast of the village, right around uh, the lake shore. Um, and yeah, you guys approach the storehouse. Uh, the storehouse outside here is much larger than that of a small barn within the village. As it um, kind of looms over the uh, surrounding fields, and uh, you guys can hear like small creaks and stuff. Well. Here's our first stop, gang. Do we, do we see anything suspicious? I say, no one's gonna like cover their ears. I'm gonna fly up a little bit as well for that. Could I have summoned my eagle? Sure. On the way here? Okay. For a I'll second, I was eagle. like, Eagle, why aren't you summoning Dino? Oh. Or a hawk. Oh. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have so many familiars. It's amazing. It's like a, a staple for your characters. I need more. All right. Later. Um... Sateros and Karazi, I guess, make perception checks for me. 16. Six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Karazi, uh, the eagle is having a hard time uh, kind of spotting anything in detail in the dark. Um... But Sateros, you do notice to, that there is a small hole in the side of the roof. Um, and there seems to be a couple of, like, pink butterflies flying out the top. Butterfly. Is it a, a, the small... And then I could fit in it? Or that the eagle could fit in it? Hmm... The eagle, yes, you know. Or sorry, hawk, right? It is hawk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I will fly down and tell this to everybody. And the hawk can go in. Hawk is blind. Uh, Klein asks you what the pink butterflies. butterflies look like. They're like butterflies but pink <laughs> I can go up and look again get, get closer Nil Nil's going to go over to Corneth like rubbish through him really quick and then pull out the book yeah. of creatures again <laughs> I feel like I remember there was some kind of butterfly right oh yeah hypnosis butterfly cool. <laughs> I mean I I, I literally just opened it, <laughs> and it was the first one. <laughs> you better yell at me before I get there. <laughs> uh, Takes the book, Rain throws it at you. <laughs> 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 Rain pulls out her own book uh, and uh, shows Klein, and uh, immediately the four of them uh, take action and uh, thrust open the doors. <laughs> Dildo's gonna like going look in, I guess. very. This is like you can actually read the expression because you know it's no no. Very confused at why they just charged in. Like, like this is a all new kind of thing for no no here. I'll just look down and be like, oh, okay. I guess we're doing that. I'll fly down. Matt, the offer still stands, but <laughs> you don't have to. All right, so what's in there? You guys uh, head on in after them. And uh, what you are met with is a frenzy of these butterflies just 
like everywhere inside as uh, ah. you all see these butterflies uh, seem to be having like this weird trail of like magic kind of following behind them and uh nil nil and uh corneth you both know immediately to cover your mouths Uh, no one does that very easily uh ross has got a mask he's chilling i will back a little bit up and cover my mouth so why do we just start Slapping these butterflies? That feels a little wrong. <laughs> well, what we do this? <laughs> does does the book say anything else about them besides what's on the slides? Um, yeah, it. Um, you remember. From a previous encounter, Drew, you read in the book that uh, these butterflies um, usually how they get their prey is by spreading those pheromones, basically, um, which knocks people out. And then once the people are knocked out, uh, the butterflies will crawl inside their mouths and lay their eggs. Okay, never mind. Don't do the thing I just sent. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Rip dog. He didn't. He didn't read the book. He got. This is why you read the book. Yep. Well, as much as like, you know, don't want to kill butterflies. This does seem like a infestation in a pretty like inconvenient spot (laughs) there we Uh, go hey do you guys know if the butterflies like if there's any specific way to like get rid of them looking over to the ranger he's just like watching (laughs) first they're starting to look around to see if the, the child is anywhere uh, mm-hmm. You guys do not see the child in the immediate uh, entryway here. Uh, well, typically we would just shoot them down, but I'm afraid there's just too many here for that to be an effective method right now. Uh, do any of you have any sort of uh, magic, any fire you can use maybe that could work? Brand new fireball. I was gonna say your time. Nil Nil is going to like kinda like nod and kinda like wave their hand. I think Rosie also also looks fire now. <laughs> and start rubbing his hands. You both do? Thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, as long as you are careful not to burn down the storehouse, uh, I guess give it a whirl. No one has got to put their hand down. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, I guess I'll cast burning hands then and try to not hit the storehouse and just like keep it inside if that makes sense. Yeah. Is Burning Hands a touch spell? It's an AoE. It's a 15-foot cone. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, uh... Cast, um... And... Your hands, uh... Make the cone, and fire just kind of spews out, um... And you get 
quite a bit of uh, the butterflies uh, caught in the crossfire there. Um, pretty much uh, evaporating all of them instantly. Uh, there are a, still a few that linger, um, particularly towards the back half of the, the uh, storehouse here. Well, it uh, took out a good bit of them, but I don't. I think uh, we'll probably find more further in. I will draw my trusty and neglected rapier and start skewering them. I'll take lefty and righty with some green flame blades. <laughs> Nil Nil will be like oh, looking straight, at their wow. hands and have like almost like the Nil Nil kind of smile, the very unsettling kind of like long smile, just like looking at their hands as everyone's like attacking the the butterflies. Don't burn down the building, please. No, will not act. Yeah, yet. so. Some of you uh, kind of head on forward, uh, your weapons drawn, as you kind of just start slashing the air around with these butterflies. Um, you guys catch some, um, and with, what, eight of you, seven of you working together, uh, you guys are able to get quite a few. Um, towards the back, uh, there are a set of stairs going upwards um, to uh, another level. Nilmo's gonna be like okay. making sure that like no one's like, you know, while they're attacking, no one's doing their like, yeah, ha! and you know, like breathing in this stuff and be like, like, no, stop that, and then like, go. Oh. Kind of like go back to covering their mouth, making sure that everyone's uh, good with doing that. And then Nilmo is going to try like heading over towards those like stairs. Did Tedros it look gonna, like... like... Tedros is going to just take his like spare clothes and just like do a little muzzle, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like the rubber band that you'd use to tape a crocodile's jaw shut. <laughs> Does it look like the butterflies like move away from fire? Um Yeah. We could light it. You're not fast enough about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't matter then. Look, if we can just torch them all, that's fine too. Don't say that. Don't say that. Does the people <laughs> have spell hands? slots? Yeah, I mean, Help. creating a torch would allow us to at least slowly burn them to, like, get through. I guess while looking for this kid. So using up all your magic. That's exactly why it's like, I can't. I must, I must not. <laughs> All right, I have a torch. I'll use it. Nice. Satyrus, oh, yeah. you light the torch, and uh, you see the butterflies kind of start to head up the stairs, or at least in that direction. As you guys pull that up forward, and then just like jab in with my rapier, screwing some more. No, no. Uh, you were the first to get over to the steps uh, as everyone was picking off the last of the butterflies downstairs. Mm -hmm. And you head on up and round the corner and you see uh, the boy in question uh, who is knocked out. Um... He's kind of laying on the back wall. He's got like a couple of um, bundles of hay, like dropped beside him. And uh, 
you peer over and you see um, these butterflies kind of crawling all around his body. Although it doesn't look like anything has gone into his mouth yet. Quick fireball to Listen, that would be a very nil-nil thing, but I'm going to try avoiding that. And actually, the best way to do that would be nil-nil is going to like kind of be walking up uh, kind of close, but like, you know, very, very sneakily. Once it gets kind of close, nil-nil is going to pull out their little uh, treasure box and then reach into it and then pull out a torch not lit yet and then nil nil's gonna pull out the tinder box and then like hold it away from them and then look back behind them and see if like the you know everyone else is coming up or yes they if are the, if the the butterflies are also and then once nil nil like sees everyone then nil nil is going to like light the torch eyes glowing <laughs> <laughs> You light the torch, um, and everyone uh, kind of finally gets up to the second level with you, and they see the boy. They see you. So what would you like to do? Nil Nil is going to hold the torch, both hands, in front of their face, and then leap over to the boy with their like arms outstretched, Face plant in front of the boy with like the torch, like right in front of him, and like put the torch for like kind of close to him, like to where all the butterflies are like crawling around on him, and then just like hold it there with their like face planted onto the ground. I'm gonna hold out like a, a like number four sign for like the landing. <laughs> Three and a half. And our final judge. Thanks. Oh, there's always a, that one good judge in the... Uh, <laughs> you love it. That's not Nilmo was going for. Nilmo's trying to keep it so their face is covered. Uh, bringing the fire oh. as close to the boy, as quick as possible. So it's like the fire's like appearing there to scare off the butterflies. That's the mindset. Which it does. Uh, you disperse the butterflies from his body um and quickly uh one of the four the uh wood watchers scoops the boy up and heads back down and outside as you guys then from there pick off the rest of the butterflies and nil no like chasing after them at torch in hand like yippee <laughs> Uh, yeah, so after all the butterflies are dealt with, um, you guys head back outside. Um, the boy is being, uh, tended to by, um, Erica. Uh, and, uh, after a little bit, he wakes back up. He seems quite groggy at first, uh, kind of not really understanding the situation that he was in but uh he describes like going in to get some hay um seeing the butterfly kind of being really enamored by it and then the next thing he knew he was passed out uh mimicking at corna's voice don't breathe the butterflies and then kind of nod And then Nilno's gonna like kind of rub the boy's shoulder very gently, very kind. And uh, with that, um, you guys bring the boy back to the village, um, and uh, the uh, woman thanks you, uh, hugs the boy tight heads back inside to their home and uh yeah that's pretty much it for night one unless there's anything you guys want to talk about 
We're still going back to the storehouse and keeping it out there, right? If you want to. Mm -hmm. No, no one likes We're that idea. Required to. It's fortunate that the creatures that that kid ran into was only a level one out of five danger, and not something worse. Will it into existence? I'm <laughs> Come on. We all know. There's a reason these uh, things are classified as such power levels. <laughs> the power level is over five! <gasps> <gasps> nah. <laughs> Plus, right, I well, don't believe... Did you guys want to go back to the storehouse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can just keep watch from there. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll kind of just fly around the area a little bit as well, keeping an eye out. Yeah. Farther away. <clears throat> um. Or a nose out. That's true. You do know. I do know. Got a nose. Saturn nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rest of the night uh seems pretty tame in comparison to uh, the immediate uh, start of the night there with the butterflies. Um, there are a few straggling uh, creatures, but uh, they're dealt with pretty swiftly by the wood watchers as they can just shoot them down before they get close. Um, but outside of that, no real harm, no foul. Yeah, how phantoms are a different one. <laughs> no foul, no phantom. Alright. Cool. Very cool. You guys head back to the village and uh, rest up for the rest of the night. And uh, I guess we can just skip to t ahead tonight too unless there's anything you guys want to do during the day again? I'm good skipping. I think I think yeah, Mel good. Mel's good. All right. Plus, it's getting later, so mm -hmm. I want to try and get this done within the next hour if we can. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, the evening of night two uh, rolls around. Similar, similarly, uh, people start making their way into the village. And uh, this time you see an older woman uh, who is seen at the village entr entrance, um, just kind of staring out into the fields, really worried, uh, kind of hands clasped together. As you guys uh, approach the entrance... Um, you guys ask, uh, what, what's the matter? And she uh, explains that her husband hasn't returned to the village yet, and that he was supposed to be cleaning out the, the uh, guard tower. No, well, I was going to look, look over look at... For, uh, yeah, for no, you. I was going to look at uh, the dads. How long ago did he leave? Oh, I left probably an hour or two ago. All right, we'll check it out. Yeah. All right. We're on the way over there. Just, man, these people are awful at the curfew. Right. <laughs> That's a that's a shake head moment. <laughs> nothing said but shake head. On the way over, um, you guys are just kind of talking some more with um, the uh, the wood watchers, just uh, 
what they like to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, when all of a sudden, uh, coming across the road, uh, popping out from the field, you see a small little rabbit-like creature. It is got sort of this bluish greenish fur um it's got two tails two fluffy tails long rabbit like ears it's got bright glowing uh ruby red eyes and it's got like a weird red almost crystalline forehead I'll turn the corner than the rangers. <laughs> that looks like a carbuncle. <laughs> Luckily, this one was also not super dangerous, but we should still proceed with caution. I'm almost gonna. Oh, actually, now that we are out, and uh, are the forest watchers still with us this time, or is this just us? No, they're still with you. Okay, so no, no, we'll. Nilna will still cover their eyes as if they were still Nilna staring, but then also, like, close their eyes, too. What do you usually do to get away from these? Rain will pipe up this time. Oh, don't worry. They're not like the butterflies. No, no. They, uh, they don't spread anything. So you, you can breathe. But, uh, definitely don't get too close to them. They are known for luring uh, those who are very naive into uh, traps. Well, so they don't spread anything except for misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, that's worse! <laughs> Forget illusions. Okay. Well, should we you know I'll just load my crossbow. <laughs> so say cross, he's also loading crossbow aiming. <laughs> do, do these things have like a specific take, like place that will like take someone or like lure someone to, like a nest or something? Could be. So I would maybe hold off on the crossbow. <laughs> maybe it might lead us to our man in question. Come on, isn't it more fun after a little chase? No one's gonna make their head no. Crowds in there, just like, <laughs> crossbow's 30, just like, huh? <laughs> uh. <laughs> the art of the hunt. Alright, well, uh, I'll go ahead and go off to it and be the bait. I'm okay with that. <laughs> no, it's gonna like, oh, 07, you know, or like raise a hand, you know. Oh, looks like hey, we buddy. got some bait. You want to try to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sateros, as you approach, um, the carbuncle kind of just stares at you. And uh, as you get closer, you see its mouth begin to open and open and open some more. Hey and guys! <laughs> <laughs> I don't no like this plan anymore. <laughs> no, no backing up. Quickly, you're grabbed by Klein by the uh, collar of your shirt and dragged back. And uh, as the carbuncle goes to bite down, uh, you barely are able to get out of the way in time. <laughs> and uh, from there, it will scurry off uh, down the path. Now that's a maw if I've ever seen one. You just see Nil Nil like trying, just like grabbing their jaw, like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you think it's going to its master? Want to chase it? No, no, is going to continue down the path. Yeah, I mean, I want, I want to chase it, but I was relaxing, gonna, no. very let, let, calm, relaxing. Instead of chasing it, let's follow it sneakily. So, like, it doesn't think we're following it, so maybe it'll feel safer to go to 
wherever it's going. You realize we have nil nil with us, yes. Just hold the bells. <laughs> uh, nil nil doesn't have the bells out right now because they're in the oh. Diane form. So oh, yeah. no 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 no's good. All right, well let's sneak then. Go to go. We are, we are. Right. Everyone roll stealth. Carbuncles. Eighteen. Eighteen. I got Here comes my eighteen. Too. Here we go. Oh, that is not. Um, so. Remember when I said Nil Nil oh, is like calmly been. walking? Nil Nil is actually skipping and swinging their arms, <laughs> and uh, that's a nine. All right, Nil Nil, uh, you are taking the lead, uh, and make sure you are keeping an eye on uh, the carbuncle as it. <laughs> As it, you guys can see it. It's a distance away, but you guys can still see it. Um, it doesn't really seem to be paying much attention to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, no, you're just skipping along while the rest of you are making your best attempt to uh, kind of just be very quiet. Sorry, did I? <laughs> so, hold on. I, I I got lost there for a second. Did we? Are we just following it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I was sneak behind it and wait till it goes to. You know, follow it and see if it goes to anywhere. Yeah. Um. So, you guys follow it. Um. Every once in a while, it will stop, and uh, no, no, you'll like still be skipping along, oh, yeah. and uh, one of the wood watchers will like grab you to make you stop, and then once it continues on, they just let you go, <laughs> and heard you of, continue on as well. You've heard of careless whispers. Get ready for careless nil no. <laughs> we need one of those child leashes on you. <laughs> It's a it's a like one collar but three leashes so that each one of you can have a hold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All the minus one strengths to, for nil nil. But, oh man. Hey, I don't have minus one strength. Yeah, I have a zero. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, so it cancels out. Karazi's minus one. Drew's plus one. Plus two. Set. Oh, plus two. So, oh. you so you guys are net positive on strength. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> guys, the three of us together can hold back no no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah. So you guys continue along and uh eventually the carbuncle does uh make its way all the way to the abandoned guard tower. But as soon as you guys uh kinda approach behind it, it scurries off into the woods. No, let's gonna point at the guard tower. Trap. Uh, I don't know. We were just here a day or two ago. If there were any traps, we would have known about them. No, no, it's gonna be like, bah. <laughs> but still be on your guard well if if there is a trap I guess the only thing to do is to spring the trap that's a Star Wars reference <laughs> <laughs> with that Nil Nil is going to head over to the door or gate or well, guard tower
It's just mm-hmm. Diana we're leading the charge. And they'll know you open up the door. Um, and really, uh, the first floor is quite small. It's just a small little room um, with a table and a couple of like chairs around it. Um, you can see some of like the different papers and uh, like maps that the wood watchers have been using. Um, there's a couple of like bookshelves of stuff uh, in them kind of surrounding the table there. And uh, there's a stairway that kind of spirals up. Almost going to run back to the others. <laughs> point inside. Like, that's the, that's the point. Well, I mean, I, I don't see anyone in here, so must be up, unless there's any other areas of here. Or, how is this laid out? And I'll, I'll ask that to the forest rangers. Is it just, like, how many rooms are there upstairs, or is it just go to the top? No, it's usually really just this room. Um, and then the stairway, yeah, it goes all the way up to the top and looks out over the field. I guess I'll go and I'll go up the stairs, making sure to watch around corners and stuff. Be careful. Okay. I'm just gonna follow close behind. Yeah, uh, corner view. Head upstairs, look around. Um, there is actually another floor, like in between uh, the bottom level and the top. Um, this looks like it's a small another sleeping quarters for the wood watchers that they've set up just uh some like sleeping bags and stuff on the floor nothing too fancy um but yeah you guys continue up after uh, observing for a second and uh at the top you actually do find an old man who is kind of sprawled out over like the edge there and he is passed out well it looks like that's probably him well check his mouth <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll go over and yeah, check his condition uh, he seems to be fine. Um, he doesn't really have any pressing injuries other than he's got like a bruise kind of on the back of his head. So slight possible concussion, you may think. Um, but outside of that, he's just got a couple of like scrapes and stuff from where he fell. No, no, it's gonna like look at the forest watchers and like point at him like, eh? That seems to be our man. I'll uh, try and get him back to uh, full strength here, but uh, it would probably be too much to uh, have him walk back tonight. So we'll we'll probably stay here for the night and uh, head back in the morning. No, no, it's gonna like fall on the ground and kind of like like pound their fists out of all this then the point over at the sleeping bags and oh, do you not want to spend the night in the spooky Her... tower now now <laughs> it's going to be shaking their head no <laughs> well I mean you could just go and walk back to the village all by yourself no, no, it's gonna With like get up. Out. No, no, it's gonna start getting up and start walking. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, don't, don't actually. That would be oh, stop, stop. Look, look back. Kind of looks at you confused. That, and then no, no, is going. No, no, is going to do the motion of a sigh without like actually sighing, and then like walk back over. Oh, 
you. <laughs> <laughs> Young me would have been super excited to sleep in a spooky watchtower. Using Indira's but... voice, it, uh, Nilno's gonna say, and older you doesn't want to stay in the spooky tower? Well, I mean, I'd rather not, but I understand why we are. And, and I'm not gonna pout arms. about it. All right, Nilmo is gonna turn around to that one. <laughs> All right, yeah, Nilmo's <laughs> facing away now. Little child, Nilmo's <laughs> down to one father. Wow, <laughs> disowning all for that. Oh. So vain. Listen, Cornith was already removed temporarily from the the father group. Uh, he can't be lost again. Oh. Uh. Well, oh, she you guys inside fully. <laughs> yes, which uh, you guys kind of carry him back down the stairs, uh, and uh, lay him down in one of the uh, like cots that they have set up, I guess. And uh, once again, um, Erica, the elf girl, who. Hasn't really said much yet. Uh, kind of yeah. tends to him. But yeah. In the meantime, uh, the rest of you kind of venture down to the first floor again. And uh, Klein kind of shows you uh, some of the stuff that they've uh, documented so far. Including a couple of... Uh, new malevolent that they have actually um discovered in their time here yo wake up babe new malevolence just dropped <laughs> say Let's go book dlc coming i soon. will add that after the session though because i haven't made it though mm -hmm. okay it's um <laughs> yeah <laughs> mythical creature yeah a month out here has uh, really seemed to uh, garner a lot of uh, research uh, for us, which has been good. We've uh, discovered a lot of new monsters out here. Hmm, what, what kind? Um... Well, uh, we have actually discovered version, versions of uh, the Faceless uh, that you have all fought, it seems. Although, I don't think they were anywhere near as threatening as uh, what you all described. Mm, but uh, we've also seemed to find a couple of uh, other, like... Aquatic base creatures. Um, we even found um, a, an aviary creature as well. That was quite, quite strange. Nilo's gonna be like, they're gonna mention the water creature. Nilo's gonna like shake their like, nah, 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 nah. And then they're gonna mention the uh, aerial one. And then Nilo's gonna be like swinging their arms and just like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Oh, no, no. What have you been so scared of these creatures? Like, when we were walking in the forest back a while ago, you blew one up instantly. <laughs> Nilmo is going to look very bashful. I kind of kind of step away a little bit, you know, just, just kind of walk away from the group. <laughs> just got to grow a little bit more confidence. You're stronger than you believe yourself. Oh, it's gonna turn back over and walk back. Not. <clears throat> well. 
I suppose if uh, we do run into any other new monsters, uh, we'll uh, make sure to keep you updated. And uh, if you all happen to run anything new as well, please uh, mark it down in your books and uh, share it with as many of the forest rangers as you can. This information is quite vital living out here in the forest. I'm almost gonna nod to that. Do that. Oh, you know what? Since uh, Indira is not here spiritually, Nelno is going to go over to Indira and it, with Corna's voice will whisper in their ear, someone would have had tested the butterfly so it could be noted down and then walk away. <laughs> Are you trying to say something, Corna? Or about Corneth. You know, like the, the people online who like has the stings of different insects. Oh. It's this one hunter who definitely didn't volunteer who just is getting bodied by everything. Did you <laughs> eat the butterfly? There it is. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> That's for you to decide. Actually, it was the hunter's dog. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna go over to like Cornus Book of Monsters and like tap it, thumbs up. Yeah, we'll make sure to add anything we see. <laughs> you know, I'm curious more about your mission. You. The other night, when we were first talking about it, you mentioned some so-called cyan? Sign? Cyan? Cyan. Sign. It's no. someone that we're looking for, but don't know who yet. Hmm. Any ideas who they could be? We might be able to help you. Well, we're, we're waiting for that information ourselves. Hmm. Like... Anyone that may have seemed to stand out in any way in uh, any of your past adventures throughout or on hmm. anyone else remembering anything i i can't say i'm a uh, uh, leader of the forest rangers i mean no i says confidently I don't, I don't remember anyone like suspicious or anything particularly i mean we're gonna get the info in you know theory so i don't know i don't think we need to look into it or you know how people look into it with slash for us yeah, yeah i know i just wanted to repay the favor for all that you've done for us in the village so far i thought maybe we could be of some help that's all we might have something once we get more information fine can't, nods can't believe seven just told us to go like chill in the forest for a while and it's totally forgot to like message us so like a week or so is gonna pass and be like, huh, that's weird. I should probably like see why they have, see if they're dead or anything. Be like, oh, the information, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you guys, oh wrong place. It, it, it's like Toby. It's like you, but like in reverse. Was like, oh the phone. no, not the fo oh, it, it, like, it, phone. It, it, doesn't like, work. <laughs> no, <laughs> relatable, but you're like you know I text him but i don't want to seem needy because he just saw them 
and I'll give a, a thumbs up. And then go over and pat uh, Klein on the back. He gives a thumbs up. I do a lot of that. All right. Well, we'll call it a night here. Rest up and uh, head back in the morning. Sounds good. All right. The third day rolls along. It is another standard day. <gasps> Karazi, the past few nights, uh, you've been having that same dream. Oh, God. But you seem to have been more able to handle it in the mornings this time around. Okay. After all, every day, Nil Nil reminds you that they're not real, but Nil Nil sure is. <laughs> well, on this third day, Krazi's not going to mention anything about the masks. No more. However, he will be mum muttering something about the storm eye or something. Well, that's just, you know, just a little something. Be anything, really. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, wake up, head on back to the village. Um, once you're there, do some daily patrols with the wood watchers, help around the village once again. Um, and the day rolls along fairly quick, quickly. And, uh, as you all prepare yourselves for your last night, uh, where you will finally head to the dam, uh, during the evening, uh, you guys all go, kind of go through one final rundown. And Klein is like, uh, all right, well, now that we don't seem to have any other uh, things holding us up, we can actually go to the game my tonight. My fish got stuck at the storehouse. No, <laughs> not the fish. No. <laughs> <clears throat> but... Tonight will be a little bit different than the previous two. We're going to need everyone on high alert. In the past, the dam has been a place where the malevolent like to gather in bunches, making it much more dangerous than the previous spots. Once we get to the dam, we'll need to, pr to prep it for the next day, when most of uh, this round of crops will be transferred to Ohara. Some of this prep work will include cleaning out whatever uh, monsters appear, equipping uh, the docking and loading stations with proper equipment, unlocking the floodgates to raise the water levels of the river a little bit. And once all that is done, uh, well, you're all free to stay here and rest the, the night, or you guys can just head straight to O'Hara. Any last questions before we head over? No. That all sounds good to me. Before we go, I'm going to pop my sending stone to seven and say that we've made it in Alderaan. Any word on who we should be looking for? You Just feel the sending there. stone begin to emit some light. And finally, a message from seven comes through what? foulings too much had to retreat apologize for delay the scion of Alderaan goes by Adam a tall male elf please find him Adam 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 no. <laughs> Adam <laughs> Are we leaving the people? Jeez, what are they called again? Oh my god. The forest, forest rangers. rangers? No, we're not leaving them just yet. Okay. I have a question mm. for... Who's my favorite one? I like Rain the most. I have a question for Rain right before we leave. What is your question? I would just like to, to, to like 
pull pull them off to the side and be like, "You were asking about something with trauma. Do you know anything about this?" And I'll like come up to whisper to her, "Storm I Just to see. Just a hope. Storm I Um, I might have read something about it back in the libraries at O'Hara. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, isn't that some ancient artifact from Marin? Yes. My home country. And I'd, I've been searching for it. I've hmm. never been able to find information until now. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'd say your best bet is looking at the libraries in O'Hara. I'm afraid I don't really remember much about what they were saying, but I do remember at least reading about them. Take a gander. Thank you. Of course. That's all I have to ask. Lina uh, will go to up to you, Sadros, as you guys are starting to walk over. So, did you finally get a return message? Seemed like your stone seemed to work earlier. Yep. Do you know an atom? Atom. <laughs> Adam. 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 I think I've heard of him before. He spends most of his time wandering the streets of O'Hara. Frankly, he seems like a bit of a loose cannon to me. And he kind of looks around at the rest of the uh, Wood Watchers. And they all seem to agree with this sentiment. Although none of them have really communicated with him thoroughly enough to say otherwise. Tall elf. Yeah, he's a tall elf. Um, got sort of dark colored skin. Um, and yeah, like I said, he spends most of his time just patrolling around the city. So, I'm sure if you guys are heading to O'Hara next, you'll run into him. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the info. He finally got his info. <laughs> We've done it. Yeah, I guess all I had to do was text first. <laughs> oh, <laughs> classic. You did that and done. Man. So, um, you guys head on over it takes about 15 to 20 minutes like i said earlier of uh basically just walking around the lake and uh if you guys want i'll allow for any time if you guys want to chat amongst yourselves no i'm just gonna like look over at the group and be like fight monsters fight monsters fight monsters and start like shadow boxing I really like want to open very the flimsy plug. arms. <laughs> I kind of just want to get to O'Hara. Why? That's priorities. Fair. We got uh, we got some pretty useful information. I mean, sounds like the guy's just wandering around. <laughs> so, the, it doesn't like make us. him hard to find. Yeah. We just like wander as well, and we just like doing like our loops and. <laughs> no, oh god, no! <laughs> it shouldn't be hard that hard to find. Starts going in a circle. We just okay. never think to walk the other direction. <laughs> Wacky it's like in Mishoku Tensei when uh, Rudy and uh, um, 
Roxy are like in the same city, and they just like uh, never seem to run into each other. Dang. Anything else? Hey, Cornus, how's your boat? Uh, not like I would know. <laughs> uh. I think Nilnal's good. Nilnal's pretty hyped up. <laughs> yeah, Crosby's good. All right. Let's fight some things. And open the floodgates. <laughs> and then run away. So, you reach the dam. There are a set of steps up to uh, the entrance. To the, uh, excuse me, to the inner chambers. And uh, Klein kind of leads you all up. And uh, once you guys are inside, he kind of goes over once again what you guys need to do. Basically, um, he said before, the dam needs to release small portions of water every week to keep the lake from overflowing and to allow for those downriver to get some fresh drinking water. So, um, inside, you see a set of large tanks, each one pretty much filled to capacity. And uh, on the far side, uh, the far wall, there is a set of levers. The back wall from which uh, you all entered from has a set of small windows kind of overlooking the lakeside. And uh, parallel to that wall, there is a similar looking set overlooking the river valley. On your walk over, Klein instructed you on how the dam actually worked. And essentially, each of the levers corresponds to one of the tanks. Only two tanks are meant to be released at a time. Each of these level levers are labeled with a different color, uh, green, yellow, or red. Green signifies that the levers uh, are allowed to be pulled normally. Yellow signifies that if there is overflow in the lake, uh, they can, the yellow labeled tanks uh, will expel water faster than normal. Uh, and the red are to only be pulled in case of emergency because they could risk flooding downstream. Nice. That's a very nil nil stares and then nods their head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like what I don't like what I think you're thinking about. <laughs> no, no, is just staring, smiling. All right. So, uh, for uh, preparation of uh, the water expulsion, uh, there are a set of hatch doors on a level below that need to be opened beneath to let the tanks let the water flow out. And uh, we need four people uh, to open these hatches, which uh, the Wood Watchers will volunteer to do. Um, and then they need two people to control the levers. So, I want to do Razi one. raises his hand. All right. High five. Both of you make uh -huh. strength checks. <laughs> yeah, baby. Let's go. Wait, do you have a minus one, Crosby? Yep. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you bardic inspiration. Oh. Well. Do I even need it? Sure. We'll add it. What? Is it a D4 or a D6? Uh, let me look. I, a D8, actually. D8? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. That it is a very good roll. roll. I rolled a 17 plus 2, so 19. Non natural 20. Nice. Crazy is strong today. So 20 in Corneth, what'd you say? 19. 19, mm. alright. Yeah, you guys are very easily able to uh, pop the levers down. 
And as you do, you see the tanks begin to drain. And uh, you guys kind of, after everything is ready, pull the levers, watch the two tanks empty out, and uh, the wood watchers kind of return back to the uh, upper level with you guys. And uh, together, you kind of all just wait and watch through uh, the windows as you see the water shoot out below. No, no, it's going to be like, uh, their head's going to be darting around, like looking like a, what, what, looking in the water, look at the sky, looking, ah. Where's it coming from? Now that was satisfying. Are you sure we didn't pull the red lovers? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> ah, the sound of rushing water always does make for some of the best noise while napping. Can I have all of you make perception checks? Oh. I want to make a napping check. <laughs> okay. Is this for hearing? 16. If you want it to be. Well, I'm pretty good today. Oh, wait, I just have advantage on any perception check. <laughs> and I don't care if it's hearing or not. Yippee! Yippee! So remember how I said that Nil Nil's head was already darting around and stuff? Well, Nil Nil <laughs> has movable eyes. That was a natural one plus three. Nice. <laughs> Nil Nil's looking, but not actually seeing. Oh, absolutely. It's just like shaking your head. You're like moving your head so fast it's making you dizzy. <laughs> Hornet, what'd you get? Um, 16. Alright. Yeah, so three of you, um, are able to look around. Uh, no, no, yeah, you are dizzy from just looking at the water. Um, but the, the other three of you, um, you get a glimpse of a shadow kind of poking around where the lovers are. A hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog is a bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Dang. laughs> those of you with dark vision, you see the shape of a short, fiendish looking person. <gasps> Not too unlike Seven in her current form. This person has large, dragon like wings and small devilish horns and messy long hair are they like what oh actually never mind they're fiendish creature yeah i mean uh i guess i, I i'll ask anyway do they have like any um like similarities with adam's description and all no. No? Okay. But this person also has a large spear draped across their shoulders. Kind of like this. Uh oh. Hmm. Now, which oh, of these no. levers did you say was in case of emergency? Wait, I'm not going to even let the him talk green about one. it. <laughs> or wait, actually, can I even do that? What? Guys, is this the new Leviathan? Uh, no, well, I want to try and using Entangle, um, which to try and like entangle him before he can press anything. But Dang. I, I don't. I guess it doesn't say that I can't do it in like a man-made structure like this. They just spawn. So yeah, it's great. Oh. Grasping weeds divide sprout from the ground in a 20 foot squ square starting from the point within range. Oh, that's pretty big, actually. It's well, I, I can do it. Hard. I can do it like not where we are, though, I guess. Not um, where turn the, the ground is. into difficult ter that terrain. A creature in the area when you cast a spell must succeed a strength saving throw or be restricted till the spell ends. 
So it is a strength 17 save. Uh, well, they fail, but before you cast, um, they'll just be like, eh, who cares? I'll just break them all. And they begin to lift up their spear, preparing to swing. Oh. And, uh, you hear something whiz by from the back of the group as you see Klein, bow already drawn. We and, all uh, had the same idea. <laughs> The arrow comes flying by, strikes uh, just right uh, in front of uh, where this other person is by the levers. And Klein is like, I'm sorry, but this area is off limits to those who are not permitted. Especially to those who wish to tamper with anything. State your name and business and I may let you off the hook with a warning. Soon after, uh, Corneth, you cast a spell, and vines begin to uh, wrap around this person as they turn around. And looking back at the fiend person, you see the arrow sticking out of the wall right by where they were first standing. And it looks like they had dodged, but now they're kind of wrapped up in your vines as they're now facing towards the group. I may look small and frail, but you'll have to be quicker than that if you wish to stop me. As for who I am, well, I'm sure your friends here can take a good guess. I've never That's met this friends. man in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no points. Are you mammoth? It's sin! <laughs> I am known as Mammon. <gasps> I am one of the seven deadly sins. As for my business, well, I could tell you, but where's the fun in that? Klein's look becomes sinister as he kind of just dead eyes Mammon. I see. Then I was right to have opened fire. Hmm, maybe. But when, what do you intend to do about that? As she points out the window overlooking the lakeside, you notice a bright light kind of emanating from outside. You rush over and see smoke flying up from the village and large oh. fires beginning to engulf some of the buildings. Oh no. Aren't you supposed to be lazy? Why are you burning the whole village down? <laughs> yeah, a lot of work for you. Tell you what. I'll give you an ultimatum. Either you like can leave that. here and go rescue the village for some of the friends from some of the friends that I brought with me. But you fail to stop me from breaking the levers here. Or you can try and stop me now from breaking the levers. But you won't make it back in time to save the village. So, which will it be? And that is where we will end for tonight. No. Nice. You guys make your decision. Oh. You guys can talk amongst yourselves out of session. And uh, we will do whatever you guys decide next time. Oh, no. I think I already have an idea, so... There you go. Nil Nil gets a, a weird vision of a, a, a group similar that had an important decision to make, too. Right. Um, uh... Hopefully <laughs> um, it doesn't result in the same ending. <laughs> hey, I like that ending. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's another time. Oh, did we level up, by the way? <gasps> nope. Oh. Uh. <laughs> bye bye. bye. <laughs>